Hello, and welcome to this Richardson RFP D webinar. My name is Katie, and I will be your Global Spec moderator. Now, let me introduce today's presenters. With us today is Larry Hawkins. Larry is the Director of Technical Marketing and Integrated Solutions and Systems at Richardson RFPD. Joining Larry today is Mark Valero. Mark is the Director of Strategic Marketing at Richardson RFPD. Thank you, Katie, for that introduction. Hello, my name is Mark Valero. I will be presenting with Larry Hawkins today about something we are very excited about, design accelerators. Looking at the agenda today, after a quick introduction of Richardson RFPD, I will speak on the investment in radio hardware development, as well as some of the challenges and obstacles. From there, we will review what design accelerators are, the different formats, and the radio system architectures that they support. Then we will show our design accelerator ecosystem with examples, and finally, a summary of where to get more information. If you are not familiar with Richardson RFPD, we are a global electronic component distributor. Generally, people associate distributors as companies to order electronic components and hardware from. While it is true, we are very different from other distributors in that we are a specialist focusing on RF to millimeter wave technologies and solutions. Over many decades, that specialization has grown a strong technical support and capability that we offer customers at no charge. That capability covers a wide array of solutions from semiconductors to passives and interconnect, data converters, and even modules and systems or subsystems. The Richardson RFPD advantage is apparent. First, we employ an extremely technical sales team, with most of them being electrical engineers. Our philosophy has always been our sales engineers working directly with customer design engineers. But we also employ the industry's best RF field applications engineers, all of which have system design experience. Furthermore, as an RF specialist, we have a curated line card and are extremely close to our suppliers. For most suppliers, we are their largest distributor and or one of their largest customers, so our customers can leverage that access. Another differentiator is customization and screening. It is important for distributors to maintain inventory of standard products, especially today, but in the world of RF, Standard products may not be sufficient for some circuits. Richardson RFPD has in-house capability to screen components for customers, as well as we work with our suppliers to make customized solutions available. Finally, within the last year, we have added a new capability by developing formal relationships with design services firms, so we could now provide a full suite of support for a variety of requirements to our customers. Now let's look at the process for bringing a radio to market. Granted, there are various levels of complexity, but our customers can take anywhere between six to 18 months to develop a radio and invest up to $500,000 for the most complex systems. Steps cover the gamut from investigation, PCB layout, multiple board spins, debugging and manufacturability tests. Also note that it takes a large team of developers to make this happen from algorithm developers, FPGA developers, software engineers, RF engineers, etc. This is where design accelerators come in. Today, there is a critical mass of hardware, software, and design support available that greatly simplifies radio and RF system development, so you could finish more projects faster and under budget. So what are design accelerators? Before I answer that question, we should really give kudos to analog devices as we are building on their efforts. Analog devices is a well-known semiconductor company, but one of the aspects that makes ADI unique is that they employ a large team of system developers, hardware engineers, and software developers that design system and subsystem level solutions built from ADI semiconductor devices. Why they do this is to encourage more companies to utilize ADI solutions but ADI notes that a lot of radio hardware development is not necessarily generating intellectual property. Instead, that development can be considered, quote, sweat equity, unquote. So a large part of their reasoning of developing system tools is that it can help customers develop products, not compete with them. Design accelerators starts with that hardware. As a rule, these are standardized, off-the-shelf platforms 
with documentation that are priced competitively and ready to use, quote, out of the box, unquote. While there are a variety of solutions available to meet different requirements, and we are also growing the number of solutions, we freely admit we cannot account for every use case. What is available, though, can shorten development time as design files are available via license. Furthermore, both ADI and Richardson RFPD have aligned with third parties that offer both design services and customized hardware. And since we are building from established platforms, the path to production should be much faster. Finally, no radio would be a radio without software. And our accelerators include licensable or open source software so you could start developing your algorithms quickly and easily. Of note is this landing page to our selection of SDR design accelerators, some of which will be covered in this presentation today. Now let's look at some of these design accelerator solutions in a little bit more detail. The first one we're gonna talk about today is the RF FMC reference design. This is an RF card with an FMC interface that can be easily integrated with a known FPGA FMC card. These RF cards can employ either wideband transceiver ICs or high-speed data converters for the radio. Multiple configurations and bandwidth requirements are available and design files are available via license. Although the baseband processor is not included, software for multiple baseband processors is included, and thus giving you the flexibility of using the best one for your application. This is an ideal solution for fast prototyping when you selected a supported baseband processor available in an FMC card. Next, we have the SDR system on module, or SOM which integrates the RF card with a baseband processor on a single board. This extra integration is an advantage for some use cases. It is literally an off-the-shelf SDR OEM module in a compact footprint. Design files and software are available via license, and we offer design services and full customization from third-party partners. The downside of this extra integration, of course, is you are limited to the SOC and radio configuration that's been selected. However, we are expanding the number of SOMs available and design partners have some ability to either upgrade or downgrade. Next up, the SDR development platform integrates a SOM with a carrier board, which offers simplified access to the peripherals of the SDR. Many product development projects can benefit by the development platform. Some of our platforms include integrated RF front ends with high power transmitter power amplifiers. This is a great platform for developing full systems, especially when taking advantage of digital pre-distortion software. The SDR demonstration platform is the most integrated solution available. It combines the SOM with a carrier board, yet it's also enclosed in a housing. Not only do you have easy access to all the peripherals, but it is easy to start developing algorithms or even taking field measurements. This is the closest solution to an end product, yet design files and software are also available via license. This pictured solution includes two units so they could talk to each other and also includes externally mounted antennas. The only downside, of course, again, with in extra integration is that it does come at a cost since you're limited to the available features of the selected hardware. Here we have a high level view of the four levels of integration that we just reviewed and how they're best utilized. I won't repeat this detail, but you may find it is a good summary reference as it organized the solutions by their level of integration and details some of the features and use cases. While many radio solutions may be low power, most of the time they require an RF front end with amplified transmit and receive paths, integrated switches and filters. While there are not many of these boards to choose from today, we are growing the RF front end boards to be integrated with existing SDR platforms or as standalone solutions. Like other boards, all RF front ends are licensable and customizable. Finally, the last design accelerator format we will review today is something new. The wideband frequency converter is a family of general purpose, high performance wideband converters that are designed to interface directly with an external baseband platform and RF front end. As you can see, it is mounted in an enclosure, but like our other accelerators, the hardware is licensable and customizable. 
Moving on from design accelerator formats, now let's look at alternative radio systems. Today, there are three dominant technologies available that offer different operating frequency and bandwidth capabilities. First, wideband transceivers offer good low band performance as they operate from 30 megahertz to six gigahertz and can support narrow band as well as reasonably wide bandwidth channels of 12 kilohertz to 450 megahertz. These are highly versatile solutions, some of which include digital pre-distortion software and are ideal for military, instrumentation, and communications applications. Alternatively, high-speed converters, RF DACs and ADCs, operate in the same sub-6 gigahertz space, but offers over 1 gigahertz of bandwidth, which is much higher than transceivers. This makes these solutions ideal for radar and electronic warfare, as well as some 5G communication systems. Finally, the wideband converters cover the most spectrum, from DC to 44 gigahertz, as well as the widest usable bandwidth of up to 1.6 gigahertz for the most demanding application. Finally, this slide summarizes the available design accelerators that we offer by radio technology. You can see we are covering multiple bases and there are a lot of tools to leverage depending on which technology is your best fit. And with that, I will hand this over to Larry Hawkins. Larry? Thank you, Mark. This is a list of our high-speed converter FMC solutions. It consists of solutions with a variety of sampling rates and frequency ranges. Some of these solutions are made up of ADCs, and some include both DACs and ADCs. People may ask, what's the difference between these FMC solutions and ADI's regular evaluation boards that tend to have FMC connectors? The answer to that is these are designed to be used with regular FPGA platforms instead of the customized ones from ADI. This makes it easier for you to use the FPGA you're already planning on using in production to evaluate the ADCs and DACs, then smoothly go into software and algorithm development. Another difference is the HDL code is open sourced allowing you to not only smoothly go into software and algorithm development, but this gives you a head start, allowing you to get to production earlier. These solutions come with an SD card with a Linux image already on it. All you need to do is to move the right files from the SD card to the root base on which FPGA board is using. Once that's done and the FPGA board is ready to boot, plug the FMC solution in an FMC slot of a compatible FPGA. Turn on the board and they're ready to go. You don't even need test equipment for the FMC solutions that have both ADCs and DACs. You can connect them in a loopback configuration and start seeing the signal in IIO scope. Note that there are four FMC ADC solutions that use the AD9625, a very capable 12-bit 2.5 gigasample per second ADC. These boards were designed in alternate configurations to make it easy for you to choose one that's the closest to your particular application. We'll talk about some of these variants later on in the presentation. Please note that I could spend more than an hour on each solution in this presentation, but instead of going into a lot of detail on these solutions, I'm going to give a high level overview. If you have more questions, I can answer them at the end of our presentation, or we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one conversation later on. In general, these high-speed converter FPGA FMC solutions are used for data acquisition applications or as wideband transceivers. They can also be used for wideband auxiliary receiver applications. They have been tested with specific FPGA platforms but users are welcome to port them to the, to the specific FPGA of their choice. 
All the FMC solutions include optimized power management that gets its power from the FPGA carrier motherboard. All of our FMC design accelerators include a licensable JSD204 interface that provides a performance optimized IP framework which integrates complex hardware such as high speed converters, integrate, integrated transceivers, and clocks with various FPGA platforms. The design includes RF slash high speed layout and thermal considerations and the design files are made available so users don't need to worry about the complexities of these things. All high speed converters on a particular FMC platform are synchronized to allow for their use in most applications. And some of them are also able to be easily synchronized with other external boards, allowing for the use in phased array applications without external synchronization efforts. These designs have many uses, including customer or management demonstrations, or just using the platform to start the development of software and algorithms while the hardware guys are integrating the solution into their hardware. They can be used as a reference design, or Richardson RFBD can supply a third party to customize and or complete the designs. For example, our third party can add an RF front end to the design. In the end, all of these solutions are made available to reduce your time to market. The first FMC card I'll talk about is a FM FMC DAQ2. The card is comprised of the AD9680 dual 14-bit 1 giga sample per second JSD204B ADC. The 9144 quad 16-bit 2.8 gigasample per second JSD204B DAC and the AD9523-1 14 output 1 gigahertz clock and power management components. It's clocked by an internally generated carrier platform via the FMC connector comprising a completely self-contained data acquisition and signal synthesis prototyping platform in an FMC footprint that's 84 millimeters by 69 millimeters. The module's combination of wideband data converters, clocking, and power closely approximates real-world hardware and software for system prototyping and design with no compromise in signal chain performance. You'll note that the AD9144 is a quad 2.8 gigasample per second DAC, but I'm listing the FMC DAC2 as a 5.6 gigasample per second dual DAC. That's because it interleaves two of the DACs to give one half the channels at double the sample rate without large interleaving spurs. The two channels of ADC and two channels of DAC are fully synchronized. The FM Comms 11 board is a system platform board that demonstrates a direct to RF transmitter and receiver slash observation receiver architecture. Using high sample rate RF ADCs and DACs, a number of components in previous generation transmitters can be eliminated, such as mixers, modulators, IF amplifiers, and filters. The objective being to bring the ADC and DAC as close to the antenna as possible, leading to possibly a more cost-effective and efficient solution. It's comprised of multi-gigasample per second RF ADC and RF DAC, AD9625 and AD9162 respectively. The transmit path contains a ballon, low pass filter, gain block, and variable attenuation to produce an output appropriate for a power amplifier module. Along the observation path, the PA output is coupled back into the board 
through a variable attenuator, a ballon, and finally the ADC. Clock management is taken care of on board. All the necessary clocks are generated from a reference. Power management is present as well. The FMC ADC2 is a 12-bit high-speed data acquisition board featuring the AD9625 single-channel ADC at 2.5 gigasamples per second in an FMC form factor which supports a JSD204B high-speed serial interface. This FMC card is designed for sampling wide bandwidth analog signals up to the second Nyquist zone. The, this, the combination of wide input bandwidth, high sampling rate, and excellent linearity, the AD9625, is ideally suited for spectrum analyzers, data acquisition systems, and a wide assortment of military electronics applications, such as radar and jamming slash anti-jamming measures. The board meets most of the FMC specifications in terms of mechanical size, mounting hole locations, and more. Although this board meets most of the FMC specifications, it's not meant as a commercial off-the-shelf board. If you want a commercial ready-to-integrate product, you can use the design files to do it yourself, or Richardson RFPD has third parties that can do that for you. The design of the board is, is specifically tailored to synchronize multiple FMC ADC2 boards together. It allows for an onboard or extended clocking, and there was an I.O. added for multiple board synchronization. It also includes the device data capture via the JSD204B serial interface and the SPI interface. The samples are written to the external DDR DRAM. It also allows for programming the device and monitoring its internal registers via SPI. The FM ADC2 is the base design for the FM ADC3, 5, and 7. They're all data acquisition cards designed around the AD9625 and include the base attributes I have listed. These four boards were created to get you closer to the configuration you'll be using in your specific design. The only other FMC card I wanted to highlight was the FMC ADC5. This FMC reference card is very similar to the FMC ADC2, but it interleaves two AD9625s without large interleaving spurs. This is a list of most of our integrated transceiver FMC solutions. These boards are similar to the high-speed converter FMC solutions, except they use ADI's highly integrated transceivers. ADI's portion of the FPGA HDL code is open sourced with the JSD204 IP licensable for production use. Just like the high-speed converter FMC solutions, the boards are very easy to bring up. No test equipment is required for basic measurements. You'll note that a good portion of these solutions are based on the AD9361 and its variants. The AD9361 was ADI's flagship initial offering into integrated transceivers and is a very capable chip. The AD9361 receives supports up to two direct conversion RF receive channels. It has fully integrated synthesizers, including the loop filter. The data path consists of LNA, AGC, demodulator, low pass filter, ADC with quadrature calibration and DC offset calibration, and digital filters. The noise figure is 2.5 dB at 1 GHz, and the ADC is a continuous time sigma delta running at 640 megasamples per second. It includes digital filters with 128 complex taps, decimation between 2 and 48, two VGAs, 
one with 1 dB steps in 80 dB range, as well as a second that's post ADC with 30 dB range. There are other features like an on-chip sensor for temperature correction RSSI. On the transmit side, it supports up to two direct conversion RF transmit channels, fully integrated synthesizers, including loop filters, the data path consists of digital filters, a 320 megasample per second DAC, modulators, VGA with quarter dB step size and 86 dB range, digital filters with 128 complex taps, and interpolation between 2 and 48. The AD9363 and 9364 are lower cost variants of the AD9361 and either reduce functionality or channel count. So, as I was saying before, a good portion of the integrated transceiver FMC solutions are based on the AD9361 and its variants. If we call the FMCOMS3 solution the baseline, the FMCOMS2 is a reduced frequency variant, the FMCOMS4 is a reduced channel count, and FMCOMS5 is a dual version. The ADRV9371-W-PCBZ and the FMCOMS8 are made from next-generation integrated transceivers. The FMCOMS3 consists of four functional partitions, receive path, transmit path, clocking, and power supply. As mentioned earlier, the transmit and receive path comes from the AD9361, and all key features are reproduced on the solution. The clocks are managed by the AD9361 and are software programmable. Please refer to the device data sheet for the various clocks within the device. The board provides a 40 MHz crystal for the AD9361. The SPI signals are directly passed to the FMC connector. The AD9361 allows real-time control via dedicated pins. These signals are passed to the FMC connector. The functionality of these pins are programmable and include gain, synchronization, state machine control, etc. The AD9361 also allows real-time monitoring of internal signals via another set of dedicated pins. Again, these signals are passed to the FMC connector, and the internal signals are multiplexed into these pins. The FMCOMS3 includes a complete power solution, including a DC-to-DC -DC step down regulator and LDO. The FMCOMS8 is an integrated RF design containing two analog devices ADRV9009 wideband transceivers, providing 75 megahertz to 6 gigahertz quad transmitters, quad receivers, and quad input observation receivers for DPD. It has a max receive bandwidth of 200 megahertz, max tunable transmit synthesis, bandwidth of 450 megahertz, and max observation receive bandwidth of 450 megahertz. It has fully integrated fractional N RF synthesizer slash loop filters and provides multi-chip phase synchronization for all RF LO and baseband clocks. It complies with the Vita 57.1 mechanical dimensions of 84 millimeters by 69 millimeters, but is not fully compliant with the keep out areas. Platform development environment support includes industry standard Linux industrial IO applications, MATLAB, Simulink, GNU Radio, and streaming interfaces for custom C, C++, Python, and C Sharp applications. Open source HDL reference designs and drivers allow for zero day development time. 
by connecting to a compatible FPGA development board that supports FMC HPC mechanical connectors and JSD 204B bus interface. It can be used for evaluation and prototyping. The four channel transceiver can be synchronized in phase and frequency. Additionally, it can be used with the ADRV 9009ZU11EG RF SOM system. This gives a path to evaluate and prototype with up to eight phase and frequency synchronized transmit and receive channels for complex multi-stream applications, ensuring end-to-end -end deterministic latency. The ADRV 9009 transceivers include integrated LO and phase synchronization. Overall system frequency and phase synchronization is maintained with the clock tree structure using ADI's high performance low jitter HMC 7044 device, making it ideal for applications requiring RF phase alignment with a large number of channels. Our RF integrated transceiver with FPGA SOM solutions are very similar to integrated transceiver FMC cards, except for the form factor and lack of flexibility in the transceiver and FPGA. The goal was to put both the integrated transceiver and FPGA on the same card in a very small form factor, getting you one step closer to having a final product. Richardson RFPD has third parties that'd be happy to customize one of the SOMs for your requirements, but changes to the FPGA are not as easy as just connecting the FMC board to a different FPGA platform. The ADRV 9364-Z702 and the ADRV 9361-Z7035 are similar to the FM comms 3 and 4 systems, so we won't spend a lot of time on them. Banteon and NextGen RF have created SOMs to take advantage of one of ADI's newest integrated transceivers, the ADRV 9000X series, so I'll spend some time talking about them. We'll first talk about the ADRV 9009-ZU11EG. It's a highly integrated RF SOM based on dual analog devices ADRV 9009 wideband transceivers. When combined with the ADRV 2CRR-FMC carrier board, this hardware platform can be used for prototyping and reducing time to market for application specific designs, offering four transmit and receive RF channels and four inputs for observation receive applications. An additional RF board can also be fitted to the carrier to further expand the system up to eight transmit and receive RF channels and eight observation receive inputs. Analog Devices also has examples of synchronizing up to 12 ADRV 9009s or 24 individual transceivers. Multiple ADRV 9009-ZU11EGs can be synchronized together for prototyping of complex multi-stream application applications, ensuring end-to-end -end deterministic latency. The ADRV 9009 transceivers include integrated LO and phase synchronization. Overall, system frequency and phase synchronization is maintained with the clock tree structure using ADI's high-performance low-jitter HMC7044 making it ideal for applications requiring phase alignment across a large number of channels. The ADRV 9009-ZU11EG has extensive I.O. capability via the two 400-pin connectors fitted on the underside. When combined with the ADRV 2CRR-FMC carrier board, 
a variety of high-speed I.O. can be used, including USB 3, USB 2, PECL 3.0 times by 8, QSFP+, SFP+, 1 gigabit Ethernet times by 2, and CPRI capability. PDF versions of the schematics can be downloaded for reference, or full design files can be licensed for customer applications. The necessary software is available to help a user get up and running out of the box. Platform development environment support includes industry standard Linux industrial IIO applications, MATLAB, Simulink, New Radio, and streaming interfaces for custom C, C++, Python, and C Sharp applications. Open source HDL reference designs and drivers are available for evaluation and prototyping. The ADRV 9009ZU11EG can operate from 75 megahertz to 6 gigahertz, and the max bandwidth for the receive is 200 megahertz. But the transmit and observation receiver have a max bandwidth of 450 megahertz. Effectively, the the part has a 16-bit 491 megasample per second ADC and DAC also. As I said earlier, the V-Protein and Byte Pipe are based on ADI's newest highly integrated RF transceiver. ADI's high-performance integrated transceiver portfolio started with the AD9361 and its variants, where it was followed by other parts that could be used for many applications, but were more focused on cellular infrastructure applications. The ADRV9002 is the first high-performance integrated transceiver that can be used for cellular infrastructure applications, but its focus is on everything else. Some highlights include increasing the low frequency coverage down to 30 megahertz and its focus on more narrowband modulation signals. Because it was made on a 28 nanometer CMOS process, it's very low power. The ADRV9002 has two transmit channels, two receive channels, and two synthesizers that can be muxed to any combination of the transmit and receive chains, allowing it to be used for FDD, TDD applications, or you could even use one of the receive paths as a sniffer to see which frequency bands are not being used while the rest of the system is turned off and then switch the whole system to that empty frequency band. It has various low power modes and the ability to do fast frequency hopping and DPD. I believe the first open market DPD that works for very narrow band applications. It also has a SPI and LVDS digital interface, allowing it to be used with an inexpensive processor slash FPGA. Navasa also has various design functions like digital down converters, FIR filters, and multiple parts can be synchronized together for MIMO applications. There are three different parts in the Navasa family. The ADRV9002 is a full featured device. The ADRV9004 is the same as the ADRV9002 without DPD. And then the ADRV9003 is a one by one version of the ADRV9004, i.e., one by one version of the ADRV9002 without DPD. As stated, all parts go between 30 megahertz and 6 gigahertz and have the same RF performance specifications and functionality. VProtean is Vantion Wireless Solutions' second software-defined radio platform based on the analog device's ADRV9004 highly integrated wideband RF transceiver and the Xilinx Zinc 7020 programmable SOC. The VProtean SDR has a custom RF front end that is highly flexible, 
allowing it to be software configured for the full 30 megahertz to 6 gigahertz frequency range and 12 kilohertz to 40 megahertz of instantaneous bandwidth. This makes vProtean perfect for signal intelligence and multiband processing applications. vProtean also has a carrier board that makes it easy to evaluate and start software slash algorithm development while the hardware team is finishing up their design. It includes many options to interface to vProtean and is designed to make it easy to start working with the platform. The Byte Pipe is a 30 MHz to 6 GHz software-defined radio SOM based on the ADRV9002 and Xilinx Zinc UltraScale Plus SOC, either the XCZU2CG or XCU3EG. The Byte Pipe can be used as an evaluation tool, prototype platform, or can be used as full-scale production and has most of the functionality of the ADRV9002, including DPD. You'll note that the two receivers can be used as regular receivers or observation receivers. The 12.5 kilohertz to 40 megahertz bandwidth make it suitable for applications, including land mobile radio, APCO P25-PII, while supporting higher bandwidth applications like satellite communications, IoT, cellular, LTE, or Wi-Fi. Platform development environment support includes industrial IIO applications, MATLAB, Simulink, and streaming interfaces for custom C, C++, or VHDL. Modulation and demodulation is available for ASK slash AM, FSK slash FM, PSK slash PM, QAM, or OFDM. The Byte Pipe also has a carrier board that makes it easy to evaluate and start software slash algorithm development while the hardware team is finishing up their design. It includes many options to interface to the Byte Pipe and is designed to make it easy to start working with the platform. Please note that the carrier board includes an LNA, but the Byte Pipe itself doesn't include any RF front end components. Richardson RFPD has also designed what we would call radiocarbon RF front end design accelerators. These are complete RF front ends, although the transmit portion can be used as a driver amp for higher power applications. These front ends were meant to be reference designs that would use either integrated transceivers or high-speed converters as a baseband. The RFPD-RC series can also be used as a carrier board slash prototyping platform for the byte pipe. The RFPD-RC-4450-50 will be released soon, and we have RFPD-RC-1327-50 prototype boards in the lab. We have paper designs for the RFPD-1327-20 and DE705 currently. The RFPD-RC series of RF front end design accelerators have standalone software slash GUI, although NextGen is designing byte pipe software to control it also. It was designed to be used with any platform that has DPD available. The boards were also designed so the byte pipe could be mounted directly to it, so it could be used in the place of the byte pipe prototyping platform. The RF portion of the boards are relatively small, but the board size has been increased so it could also be used as a Byte Pipe's prototyping platform. These platforms were planned to be used as reference designs. However, we can provide design services to modify them for your specific application also. The RFPD-RC-4450-50 is the first of these RF front ends that will be coming out. 
It's matched between 4.4 and 5 gigahertz and is a complete RF front end that includes a transmit section with a gain of 42 and a 2 watt output power assuming a modulated signal that has a 10 dB peak to average power. On the receive side, it has a 2.1 dB noise figure and gain of 23 dB. The reference design also includes not only the ability to input 45 volts to power the complete reference design, but also protection of and the ability to optimize bias for the two GAN PA stages and the GAN driver stage. Our goal is to release this by the end of the month. The next to the RF front ends that will come out is one optimized for 1.35 to 2.7 gigahertz with a 2 watt linear output, assuming a 10 dB peak to average power. This design is very similar to the previous one with the exception that it doesn't include a circulator. There isn't an, expens an inexpensive surface mount circulator that covers the whole frequency range. Our last one in this series is optimized for the 1.35 to 2.7 gigahertz frequency range also, and is very similar to the other design in this frequency range, but uses an internally matched final stage PA with about half the power. This design should be much smaller than the other two designs. We don't have a release date currently, but do have the paper design to get you started with it. The peripherals on these three reference designs include all the necessary IOs for the byte pipe, as well as the thermal, software, and operating systems needed to help you get to your final design quicker. As I'm sure you're aware, bandwidth is at a premium for frequencies below 6 GHz. As the demand for wireless increases and the demand for more data increases, Regulating bodies all over the world have opened up spectrum at higher frequencies. Everyone knows that increasing your frequency of operation is not only expensive, test equipment alone is very expensive, but also adds risk to your design. It's not easy to work at millimeter wave frequencies. RFPD has designed two different up-down converter design accelerators to help our customers reduce time to market and risk. The first one is the RFPD-RT-2444-1, a 24 to 44 gigahertz up-down converter that is expected to release at the end of the month. The module is designed to interface directly with software-defined radios such as analog devices, mixed signal front end. More about that in a minute. Power is provided via 12 volt wall cube, which is included in the kit. An embedded fan and temperature monitoring are integrated into the unit to manage heat. Control of the module is done via USB, UART, or SPI interfaces. Two API protocols are available. The first is an ASCII 2-based, and the second a binary protocol. Up to four units can be combined in a vertical stack to create a complex 4x4 MIMO radio system. Module addresses are sent using a dip switch on the configuration port. The design accelerator has high enough performance to be used for most applications in its frequency range, including instrumentation, SATCOM, 5G, and various aerospace and defense applications. The low frequency IF inputs include including the IF, IQ, external LO, and external frequency reference ports use SMA connectors. The millimeter wave ports use 2.5 millimeter connectors. The other up-down converter platform is currently at a paper design phase, but when combined with ADI's MXFE platform and the RFPD-RT-2444-1, we can help our customers with designs from DC to 44 gigahertz. 
These two up-down converters make up a radio thorium design accelerator portfolio, which is really an ecosystem design that will include various RF front ends and baseband cards. The first baseband card we'll interface to is ADI's 80, 90, 81, and 82 MXFE platforms. These are a com combination of high-speed DACs and ADCs that work perfectly as a baseband for applications between 24 and 44 gigahertz. The next group of design accelerators are final products made from high-speed converters and FPGAs designed by Red Pattaya. Users of these design accelerators are given access to the FPGA and can program their own applications or use one of the many open source applications written by other users. The highest sampling rate platform is the SignalLab 250-12. This platform comes by itself or comes with accessories to help use it for the various applications written for it. Those applications include oscilloscope, signal generator, etc. Some of the final products made from a combination of RF integrated transceivers are Pluto and PacRF. These platforms build on previous FMC cards and SOMs. Pluto is a complete transceiver made from the AD9363 and Xilinx Zinc 7010. ADI has written many learning modules for electrical engineering college courses for Pluto. There are many applications already included with Pluto. For example, I used one as a spectrum analyzer a few weeks ago. Users are also able to program it with their own applications. The next generation Pluto is a PAC-RF which comes with two self-contained dual radios. Each of these radios is made up of the ADRV9361-Z7035 RF SOM. So users can transmit from one of these dual radios to the other. All accessories are included, including the antennas and ethernet cord, etc. These dual radios even have a battery backup in case the power goes out while well, they're in use. Just like Pluto, customers can write their own applications, but it comes with many of its own. In conclusion, Richardson RFPD is your one-stop shop for design accelerators. With current pressures to get things done quicker and with less resources, we have your back. If we don't have a design accelerator that meets your needs, we have third parties that are able to design you one or modify one for your application. I've included a link to where you can get more information, but please get a hold of us and let us know how we can help. Katie, I know that we're a little over time on our presentation, but you can open it up for questions now. If we can't get through all of our questions today, we'll get back with them after the webinar. All right, Larry and Mark, thank you so much for such a great presentation. So we do only have about five minutes for our QA session today, so I want to get right into it. All right, gentlemen, our first question for today. Does Richardson RFPD offer design services? Uh, thanks, Katie. Can you hear me? Yes, Mark, you sound great. Oh, great. So, uh, yeah, great question. Um, and I think that is a little bit confusing, so I'm glad it was asked. Uh, the answer is no, we do not offer design service, services directly. We basically offer free technical support to customers that purchase our components and subsystems. Um, as mentioned, we have the application engineering support and sales engineers that can answer a lot of the technical questions. Uh, but it's important to note that we are not merely uh, selling, uh, interested in selling hardware as well. Um, think of it as being invested in our customer success and that our value is to guide customers through the designing component ordering process. Um, that said, our customers have a path to license or customized hardware from the development platforms and we can help facilitate that 
uh, but the actual service comes from another party, comes from a, uh, some of the companies that were mentioned today, like, like Vantion and NextGen RF Design. Uh, but we are not directly involved, and we think that that's not just the simplest solution, but it's also the lowest cost for our customers. Okay, Mark, thank you so much for that answer. Another attendee is asking, um, or kind of making a statement that they're looking for contactless card technology. Is that applicable? Yeah, Katie, I'll, I'll take that question. Um, the answer is it is applicable to contactless card technology, but not the uh, the card portion, the, uh, the other portion of that technology. There's multiple of these platforms that could be used for that application. Okay, Larry, thank you so much for that answer. As I mentioned, we only have a couple minutes left for Q&A, so any attendees that have questions, go ahead and enter them into the window, click Submit, and we will get back to you following today's webinar. So, gentlemen, we've got time for another here. This one is asking, what is the support model for design accelerators? Uh, hey, uh, Katie, I'll take that. So, yeah, for simplicity, uh, as may, stated before, we offer technical support for all design accelerators purchased from us and that we should always be the first contact. There are times when we would bring in a partner or a supplier into the discussion um, since the, the development platforms in these design accelerators are generally much larger than a single device like an evaluation board. Um, and uh, we, we also also, uh, not mentioned, uh, or it was mentioned earlier, we also have a dedicated page on the ADI Partner Zone, where you could also post questions on some of our uh, design accelerators. All right, Mark, thank you so much for that answer. As I mentioned, we only have about a minute left, so we are gonna handle all the rest of our questions offline. We appreciate everybody asking questions, and if you do have a question, now would be the time to enter them into that window. So gentlemen, I wanna say a huge thank you for a great presentation and for answering a couple of the attendees' questions. We appreciate Mark and Larry having you here. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Katie. All right, and a huge thank you again to our audience members for being part of this webinar event. Take care, and we will speak with you soon.